Let's move on to the next vignette. This one is site design. Here's an example one from a while ago that they used. The site design vignette is, I find, terribly annoying. I find this one annoying in the way that I find the interior layout annoying on the schematic design exam. Everybody, when they take the schematic design exam, worries about the big building design because you have to do a two-story building and it's a lot of rooms and there's all these you know, huge program and everything. But you actually have tons of time for that one. And yeah, it's a big program, but it's essentially a pretty simple thing you have to pull together. The interior layout seems like it should be dead simple. Like everybody in this room, I'm sure everybody online has done a small office layout before. How hard could that be? But you have to do it really fast. So people make just sort of dumb mistakes about kind of moving through. Well, this is kind of the same thing. You're not really doing an in-depth site design. You're just sort of worried about a couple of specific issues and you're going to think about some orientation issues. You're going to think about how the drives work and maybe some sight line issues and how the wind flows across the site, a few other things like that, but nothing particularly dramatic. This is not a complicated thing, but there's a lot of little unusual details in it. It's like, well, this should be near that. Well, how much time are you going to spend thinking about what near means? You know, like is near 10 feet? Is it a third of the sight line? Like, what does it mean? So there's a lot of words and there's a lot of process on this one that are just sort of odd and a little confusing. So this one is definitely one of those ones that you want to make sure you practice. All of them you should definitely practice. The vignettes are all about being comfortable with the program. So you're not worried about how you do things. You're only worried about what the program is asking you to do and how you're going to move forward with it. So you definitely want to spend some time practicing with it and getting used to how you move things around and how you make quick decisions. So again, this is going to be one where there's going to be certain things that are given on this particular example. There's two main streets that are shown. There's the site boundaries shown. There's a site setback that's been given. So that's a building setback. In this case, there's a bunch of trees and some ponds and might be like a rock outcrop someplace, something like that. And then also in this particular one, there's an easement there's likely to be something like a pond or an easement or both, something like that, that just sort of throws everything off a little bit and you have to kind of deal with. You know, it might be an existing sculpture that you have to stay 20 feet away from, or it might be an historical grouping of trees that have a special significance and so you have to stay away from and not damage them. But it's likely to be something like an easement or a pond or something simple like that. And you have to sort of stay away and be careful of. And then in your tool list, you're going to have a bunch of things you have to place onto the site. So on this particular one, you've got a couple buildings you have to place, you have the driveway you have to place, and a parking lot that you had to place, and some walkways. When you're doing that, you're trying to follow all those rules. You're trying to, you know, it says don't go anywhere near the pond. It has a specific distance. So you're trying not to go near the pond. You're making sure you're not crossing the easement because the easement has a sort of a sacred aspect to it. You can't just start throwing things across the easement. And then there's a bunch of other little rules about which way things are facing, what gets sunlight, what doesn't get sunlight, all of those kinds of issues. And you're sort of placing those things around a bunch of existing trees. So there's sort of this odd quality to it because you're placing and moving these things but you have to kind of imagine that you're trying to fit in where all these trees are. And then you're allowed to sort of kill off a few trees. I would always read to make sure what number it is. I think it's typically six. Could be wrong. It might be five. I can't remember. I haven't looked at it recently. But whatever it is, I would always think of it as one less than that because you can often get into a situation where you're sort of moving along. You think you've got everything answered. There's like a minute and a half left and you realize, oh my God, I never put the sidewalk out to connect to the patio. And you got to throw one in and the only place to do it, there's a tree in the way. You just want to give yourself a little bit of breathing room for that last second. That's going to make a big difference as you're doing those things. Let's quickly kind of run through. I have a sort of a list of a couple simple things. One is logical organization. Another is rules of thumb, simple orientation aspects, drive and parking. And then one kind of key one is like all the vignettes, it does not have to be beautiful. In fact, if you are thinking about anything along the lines of beautiful, you should probably just get up and walk out. This is not an exam that cares about beautiful. No aspect of this exam cares about beautiful. It is only about competent and answering the program that you've been asked to answer, even to the point that there will be sometimes things that you're asked to do that you know don't meet accessibility codes or don't meet some other code. If it's not in the vignette, you don't have to follow it. It's only what they tell you in that aspect. Mostly the vignettes are puzzles with rules and you have to answer the puzzle. That's the main thing about them. So let's run through some of these issues and think about how these can be talked about. 
blackspectacles.com is the home of online learning for architecture and design. You can go to blackspectacles.com, kind of get a taste of this online ARE prep curriculum we built with AI Chicago and Mike, covering all seven sections of the exam. And there are free tutorials in every one of those courses. As a part of today's session, you're eligible for coupon codes for your ARE membership. 15% off the monthly membership and 30% off an annual membership all through the end of the month. And we're doing group memberships. So if you want to get one for your firm or if you want your firm to buy one for you, you can go to blackspectacles.com slash business or just email me. We're running a promotion again where business memberships are 15% off as well. Our next webinar is going to be different. What we're going to do is we're going to sort of have a no holds barred Q&A session with Mike. It's not specific to an exam. Whatever exam you're working on, you have a question, you've tried to solve a vignette and you don't like your answer, you're unsure about your answer, put it in a PDF and email it to me. And what we'll do is we're just going to take them first come first serve and everyone who submits them will take an hour and Mike will answer them one after the other. So it'll be a cool event because if you actually have a question, you can get a real answer. And if you just want to see what other people are kind of wrestling with, it'd be a great way to learn from other people's questions and problems and so on. So that's going to be on April 22nd.